Hello, in this part we will have a look how we can activate and use tickless mode in practice. Now let's have a look how we can activate and use tickless mode in practice. On the next slides there is a step-by-step -step guide how to make a tickless mode example. We will need for this exercise multimeter with a microampere range to measure the current consumption or X Nucleo LPM 01A board with cube monitor power application installed on your PC. An application will be done using STM32Cube IDE toolchain, but it can be easily done with an STM32Cube MX and the toolchain supported by this tool as well. Within this example we will use Nucleo L476RG boards, but it can be easily ported to any other STM32 based board. Let's start from STM32Cube IDE or STM32Cube MX tools. We can reuse any of previous FreeRTOS examples or create a new one for selected MCU. We will start with FreeRTOS configuration. For this exercise we would need only one single task with priority set to OS priority normal, the stack size 256 and entry function start task 1. Within FreeRTOS config parameters Please enable Use Tickless Idle by selecting Built-in Functionality Enabled. What is the difference between available options there? Option 1, already selected, Built-in Functionality Enabled, is generating automatically macros config pre-sleep processing and config post sleep processing within FreeRTOS config.h file and assigned to those functions pre-sleep processing and post sleep processing within FreeRTOS.c file. And those functions can be filled in by the user. While within the option 2, user functionality enabled, user needs to prepare the code by himself. Within our example we will use low power timer as a timer which will work in background while we are in low power mode. It will be configured to 1 kHz and it will be sourced by LSC Crystal 32 kHz which is present on Nucleo L476 RG board. Within STM32 Cube IDE or STM32 Cube MX please go to timers LPTIM1 section and within this section please select LPTIM mode to counts internal clock events. Then within parameter settings please select clock prescaler to prescaler divided by 32. We need to enable interrupt or low power timer 1 within NVIC settings. The rest of the settings we will keep in default state. We need to enable LSE clock source for low power timer. Within Pinout and Configuration please select System category, then select RCC, so Reset Clock Configuration section, and then within Low Speed Clock LSE please select Crystal Ceramic Resonator. Then please go to the Clock Configuration tab and select LSE as a clock source for Low Power Timer 1, keeping MSI based 4 MHz as a default system clock. After this we can generate the code. Within stm 32 cube IDE it is enough to save the changes by Ctrl S. Within stm 32 cube MX please click Generate Code button. Once the code is generated please open a main.c file for further operations. We will start with task code processing. Please go to Start Task 1 function body. We will not use an initialization code there. Within the task infinite loop we will perform the following operations. We will go to blocked state for 5 seconds. It will be time dedicated for tickless mode. Then we will toggle the LED or send 1 over SWO as our sign of life after wake up. It can be done by calling the task action function or a simple LED toggling function from HAL library. After this operation we will try to remain half of the second using the simple HAL delay function. It will keep our task in run mode as it will be only one a part of the idle task. In this example we will use single wire output SWO additional pin available within SWD debug interface to send data over instrumentation trace microcell ITM. For simplification our function will accept single character and will return nothing. Please add a following function declaration. Then within user code begin for section, 
please insert task action function body. Function will accept only one 8-bit argument and will return nothing. Inside we will use itm underscore send char function to send one character passed by arguments and additionally we will add a sign of new line. Depending on the version of STM32Cube IDE or STM32CubeMX and the libraries you will use uh, for the code generation, uh, you may face a different implementation of config press sleep processing and config post pr sleep processing macros. Those macros are uh, defined within FreeRTOS config.h file and the simplest configuration is just empty configuration which allows you to implement your own pre-sleep and post-sleep processing functions within FreeRTOS.c file. Uh, sometimes you may face a bit uh, more complex definition within uh, this configuration file freeRTOSconfig.h. Uh, so in this case, uh, what I would recommend to you uh, to complete this exercise or in, in general this series of exercises of uh, tickless mode uh, to replace it with this uh, simplest configuration which you can see on the screen. In the next step, we'll switch to freeRTOS.c file. At the beginning, we need to make low power timer handler visible within this file. This is why we need this extern declaration at the beginning. Please remember that we need to put all of our code within user code sections. Then we need to prepare application to enter into low power mode. It will be done within pre-sleep processing function. At the beginning, we suspend the whole time base by calling HAL underscore suspend tick function. In our exercises, uh, it will suspend timer 6 which is the time base for our hardware abstraction layer library. In the second step, we need to start low power timer 1 in interrupt mode using HAL underscore LPTIM underscore timeout underscore start underscore IT function with three arguments. Low power timer 1 handler, then maximum possible period of this timer set to FFFF hexadecimal and an expected idle time to wake up the system given in milliseconds. The last argument is calculated based on the system clock and tick timer, in this case stm 32 tick to not overflow it. So in our example, the maximum expected idle time should not be more than 4194 milliseconds. In case all of the active tasks are sent to blocked states for a longer time, so like in our example 5000 milliseconds, so we can observe intermediate wake up of the system, so after this 4194 milliseconds, and entering into low power mode again for the remaining sleeping time. It is handled automatically by the freer to stickless mode implementation, but it is clearly visible when we are observing the current flow over the time on our application. Next step within freertoys.c file is to prepare the application to exit from low power mode. It should be done within post sleep processing function in two steps. Step 1. Within this step we will stop low power timer by calling function HAL underscore LPTIM underscore timeout underscore stop underscore IT with the handler to low power timer 1 as an only argument. And then within step 2 we will enable the time-based timer for HAL library, in our case it is timer 6, by calling HAL underscore resume tick function. After this we can compile the code and start a debug session, then we stop the debug session to allow our application working on the board. Within this our application should work in the following way. At the beginning the task is going into the blocked state for 5 seconds, calling OS delay function. It allows us to use the tickless mode, so idle task is starting the tickless mode for maximum 5 seconds. And then after those 5 seconds operating system would be woken up by low power timer 1 and our active task will continue its execution. So it will perform the operation of task action, so it can be either the LED toggling or sending something over the SWO interface. After this uh, short action, there would be as well the delay of half a second by calling HAL underscore delay function just to keep our task in run mode for half a second. After this, uh, there is, would be the, another iteration of our active task and uh, sending the task again to the blocked state for 5 seconds. Let's verify it. We can connect uh, our multimeter uh, to JP6 uh, jumper on Nucleo L476RG or to connect it to X Nucleo LPM01A board. 
Then we can monitor the current consumption based on application we just compiled and uh, programmed into the board. This is our next step and on the next slides uh, I will present how we can do it with an X Nucleo and uh, what would be the final result. Let's start from our hardware setup. Within our current measurement experiments we will use the following configuration. X Nucleo LPM 01A board with a micro USB cable to connect this board to PC. So this is this big board on the screen on the left side of the on the Nucleo. Then as a target board we will use Nucleo L476RG board with mini USB cable to connect it to PC. So this is on the right side of the photo. Uh, we need as well two wires to connect X Nucleo board with our target Nucleo L476, like you can see on the slide. Please connect one wire between pin 1 of CN14 at X Nucleo board. This is this CN14, this is white connector on the left side of the display, with GND pin on Nucleo L476. So this is this black wire, which we can see on the screen. And then uh, please connect pin 3 of CN14 of X Nucleo with uh, pin 2 of JP6 of Nucleo connector. What you can see on the screen, this is marked on uh, using the red wire. Then, instead of no X Nucleo, you can use, of course, the meter. In this case, please connect the meter on JP6 instead of existing jumper. The best is to use the meter with the current uh, range below 1 microamp. On the next slide, I would present how we can configure the application which is cooperating with X Nucleo board. This application is STM32 Cube Monitor Power, which should be installed on your PC. Ok, let's focus on the software. So this is the configuration in case you are using X Nucleo board to measure the current consumption profile within our target board. So once you run the STM32 Cube Monitor Power application and uh, before you perform the connection of both boards to PC, you should see possibility of uh, selecting the board with an STM32 Cube Monitor Power. Uh, there is a connect select board field if you press on it, uh, you should see available COM ports which are detected by the application. So please uh, select the COM port assigned to X Nucleo LPM01 board. On our example, there is COM21. Then please press Take Control button. It can take some time. And then within the configuration, please select 100 kHz as sampling frequency, then infinite acquisition time, and we are ready for starting the measurements. To start measurements, please start acquisition button and to stop measurements, please press stop acquisition button. In between, you can see on the screen the data which are collected from the board via X Nucleo shield and you can see the, the, the current consumption measurement in time. Here is the example of sleep mode used with anti-class mode. The picture is coming from STM32 Cube Monitor Power application working with X Nucleo LPM 01A board powering Nucleo L476 RG board. At the beginning we can see the run state, then the task is going to blocked state for 5 seconds by call of OSD live with 5000 as an argument. In this case uh, STM32 is in a sleep mode and all of the tasks are in a blocked state. And as you can see, this uh, 5 seconds, it's not exactly 5 seconds, it is divided into two parts. The first one is more or less uh, 4194 milliseconds, where we can see the first uh, wake-up event. The source uh, of this uh, wake-up event uh, is the protection of the cystic timer from being overflowed uh, while it is being frozen during the tickless mode. If we take into the consideration that Cystic is 24-bit long timer and our system clock is set to 4 MHz, the overflow of this timer will occur just after 4194 milliseconds. This is why when we request the sleep time longer than this time, it is saturated to this value, to this maximum value. So in fact, HAL underscore low power timer timeout start IT function uh, is called with third argument not 5000, like we were thinking about it, but uh, 4194. This uh, value is calculated uh, within the code of uh, tickless mode. 
So after this uh, first period, this uh, more or less 4000 milliseconds, the system is running idle task again after wake up. All of other active tasks are still in blocked state for more or less one second more. So within this idle task, uh, system is entering into low power mode again for a remaining part of this requested 5000 milliseconds. So after the complete 5 seconds elapses, there is a wake up from sleep mode done by low power timer 1 again and our active task is moved from blocked state to run state and it is performing its code execution, so further code execution after this OS delay. So the first instruction is a task action which can be the LED toggling or sending something over the communication interface like SWO. And then after this, uh, there is a call to HAL underscore delay with Hive 100 as an argument. Uh, so it is uh, keeping our task in run mode for half a second. As it is the only task, there would be no context switch in between. After this half a second, the task is calling again the first uh, instruction from its uh, endless loop. Uh, so this is always delay with uh, 5000 as an argument. It is again sending this task into the blocked state uh, for the 5 seconds and it is starting the tickless mode with an idle task. As uh, you can see the sleep mode is not giving too much current reduction, thus it uh, would be good to replace it uh, with any of stop modes. It will be our next step. Sleep mode is only freezing the code execution, so the current consumption saving is not that significant. Much better result we can have using stop modes instead. Within stop mode, so the STM32, all high frequency oscillators are stopped, while content of all of the registers and RAM is still kept. Change sleep mode into stop low power mode within tickless mode at 3 RTOS. We need to do some modifications within the vport suppress ticks and sleep function at port.c file. The change location is between execution of config pre-sleep processing and config post-sleep processing macros, like on this example. On the left side we can see the default configuration for sleep usage, activated by WFI instruction. On the right side there is a proposal of reconfiguration to use stop1 mode instead. First, please include main.h file at the beginning of port.c file. Then comment out the line which restarts sysTick. Further, instead of the line with WFI call, please insert the line with which would start stop mode like HAL underscore PWR EX enter stop1 mode with an argument of WFI as an entry mode. After those modifications, please compile the code, start the debug session, start the code execution and stop debug session. Again, we can connect multimeter or X Nucleo LPM01A board to measure the current consumption. Please reset the board and observe the current consumption flow in time using STM32 Cube Monitor Power application on your PC. What would be the visible effect? After those operations, we will enter into selected low power mode for the time where there would be no active task. In our example, it will be 5 seconds. After this, active task will change LED state or it will send 1 over SWO and remains active for half a second by calling simple function HAL underscore delay. You can check the effect using different stop modes, stop 0, stop 1 and stop 2 and compare the results. Here is the example of stop 1 mode. The picture is coming from STM32 Cube Monitor power application working with X Nucleo LPM01A board powering Nucleo L476RG board. Here on the picture we can see an intermediate wake up events within 5 seconds low power mode. After more or less 4194 milliseconds we can see a wake up event which is caused by the protection of the cystic timer from being overflowed. I have described it with an observation of sleep mode usage within tickless mode few slides before. So after complete 5 seconds of stop mode uh, we can see a wake up event and uh, sending 1 over SWO so it is an execution of task action code uh, within task function body and then after this there is a call to HAL delay function with 500 as an argument to keep our active task in run mode for additional half a second. Then there is a next iteration of the task function and uh, there is a call to OS delay with 5000 as an argument what is sending back the task to blocked state and giving the space for idle task. 
so the tickless mode can be run again for additional 5 seconds which would be divided again into two parts the first one for after 4194 milliseconds and the second one would be the remaining part of declared 5000 milliseconds here is similar example of uh, stop one mode uh, usage but in this case uh, uh, we are using LED instead of SWO so just to demonstrate to you that it is important to reconfigure the IO lines before entering the low power mode as uh, IO reconfiguration is not done automatically during or before entering into stop modes it should be done by the user manually so let's come back to the picture we can see here the five seconds of stop one mode again divided into two parts the first one is 4194 milliseconds and it's caused by the protection of the cystic timer again being overflowed and then the remaining part of the cloud 5000 milliseconds is again the system is again in stop one mode it has been described uh, already with an observation of sleep mode usage with a tickless mode few slides before. Uh, so after the system is woken up, uh, we can see that uh, within the activity of the task, the LED is turned on and then we can see the call delay code execution. So we can see this highest current consumption for more or less half of the second. The task is at the time in the, in the let's say, run mode, uh, the, the, the complete system is woken up. After this half a second, uh, the task is executed again the function OS delay with 5000 as an argument. So the system uh, is going into the tickless mode again, but uh, even if it's uh, declared as a stop one mode, uh, we cannot see too much current reduction due to the fact that LED is still on. So we can see that there is a current drop, but not that much. So LED is still on, even if we are in stop mode. Uh, so again, we can see 4194 millisecond part of it. Then there is an intermediate wake up for a while. And then there is a continuity to have in total 5000 milliseconds. So five seconds of uh, stop one mode with LED on. After this, uh, the task is woken up again by the low power timer. We can see that within this task, the LED is turned off uh, so the current is uh, dropping uh, drastically then there is a hull delay call for half a second so this is why we can see this activity of the task for more or less half a second then after this uh, the task uh, is calling os delay function with 5000 milliseconds again so we can see drastic drop of the current because the system is in a stop mode and the ios are in a, a safe configuration so there is no high current consumption caused by the io lines here is the comparison of the current consumption across different stop modes while using tickless mode. Those are the results while the complete system is in a stop mode. For stop 0 we reach around 600 microamps, for stop 1 it is 7 microamps and for stop 2 it is possible to go down to 3 microamps. Let's add some other operating system component like binary semaphore to observe other wake up possibilities. As you remember, before entering into tickless mode, there is an estimation done concerning maximum time we could spend in low power mode. Of course, it is not taking into the consideration asynchronous events like interrupts, where we can expect some semaphores or queues actions which may unblock our blocked tasks as well. Let's modify our example so we can use an existing button, blue button in our case, in external interrupt mode to give release the semaphore. We need to modify our task so instead of OS delay with 5000 as an argument, we would wait maximum 5 seconds for the semaphore. So instead OS delay 5000, we need to use the function OS semaphore acquire with the timeout of 5000. This effect, final effect, would be exactly the same. So let's start from the configuration with an STM32 Cubemix or CubeIDE. Within the project we just played with, we will just configure PC13 as GPIO underscore XTI13. Just to remind you, please click the left mouse button over PC13 pin and select GPIO underscore XT13 from the list. Then within GPIO peripherals, go to NVIC tab and enable external line 15 to 10, its interrupts. The last step is assigning the interrupt to operating system interrupts, which are allowed to execute free RTOS functions. To do this, 
we will set preemption priority to 5 for this interrupt to be less or equal to config library max syscall interrupt priority parameter, which is set to 5 within freertos config.h file. Next point is to create a simple binary semaphore. Please go to freertos configuration, then please select timers and semaphore tab. Within binary semaphore group, click on add to create a new binary semaphore. Please keep all default values with a new semaphore creation window to save the time and press OK. After this, a new binary semaphore should appear on the list within FreeRTOS configuration window. Let's save the project, generate the code and open main.c file. Within main.c file we need to add a callback for external interrupt and place there the function to release the semaphore. Please have a look that within cmc's underscore os there is no visible distinguish between os functions called from the task and called from the interrupts. Proper selection is done within cmc's underscore os layer. The prototype of the external interrupt callback can be found within hal underscore gpio module and can be tracked from stm32l4xx underscore it.c file from external interrupt procedure generated by STM32CubeMX or STM32Cube IDE. The next change is a replacement of the OS delay with 5000 as an argument with wait for semaphore function. For this we will use OS semaphore acquire function. First argument is a handler to our newly created semaphore. The second argument is a maximum timeout we will wait for this semaphore. This function will wait for the semaphore, keeping the task in a blocked state, for a maximum 5000 milliseconds. If semaphore will be released earlier, function will immediately finish its execution and task function will execute the next line, which is task action. It can be LED toggling or sending something over SWO, like in our example. If semaphore will be not released within 5000 milliseconds, the function will exit with the timeout error code and will execute task action function as well. So this is important to monitor the return value of this OS semaphore acquire to check whether the semaphore has been acquired or not. In our case, it doesn't matter because we just need to check the possibilities of waking up the complete system from the interrupt from releasing the semaphore. HAL delay 500 function at the end of the loop within the task function is keeping our task in run mode for half a second like before. As the regeneration of the code within STM32CubeMX or STM32Cube IDE is removing all of the modifications done outside user code, we need to repeat port.c file modification. So again, we need to add include main.h file at the beginning to see the HAL functions from this uh, port.c file. Then we need to command out the restart of the sysdict and uh, at the end we need to replace the WFI instruction with HIL underscore PWR EX under stop one mode with WFI as an argument. So like in our previous example. After those modifications, please uh, compile the code, start debug session, start code execution and stop a debug session. Then we can connect our multimeter or X Nucleo LPM01 board to measure the current consumption while the application is working. Please reset the board and observe the current consumption flow in time. Here we can see the situation when we have released the semaphore from the interrupt, which is our blue button, before the specified timeout elapsed. At the beginning system is in stop mode and just after 9 seconds system is woken up, our only active task, task 1, is moved from blocked to run state. And this task is woken up as a specified timeout elapsed with an OS semaphore acquire function. Then with an run mode task is sending 1 over SWO and then it is waiting half a second calling function HAL delay to be in active state for this half a second. Then there is another iteration of task1 function, uh, so the task is uh, calling again OS semaphore acquire function with 5000 as an argument. So this function will be waiting for the semaphore uh, for maximum 5 seconds. As the result of this, uh, the task is moved again to the blocked state and the system is put into stop one mode uh, with an idle task code. Uh, then, after the two seconds of waiting, uh, we are pressing the blue button, so it wakes up the system. 
Then within the interprotein, the semaphore is given, the interprotein of the front button, the semaphore is given, what causes unblocking of task 1. Then task 1 function body is executed again, starting from task action, so sending 1 over SWO like before, and then hull delay is executed, so the task is remains active for an, an, another half a second, and uh, there is another iteration of this uh, task 1 function body, so there is a call to OS semaphore acquire again. It causes sending of task 1 to blocked state again and uh, starting stop 1 mode. Please notice that our 5 seconds wait uh, is divided into two parts like in uh, previous examples due to the fact that uh, there is a protection of cystic timer against being overflowed. It has been described already uh, with an observation of sleep mode usage with venticlass mode fuse lines before. So as you can see there are two parts. The first one is ending up at more or less at time uh, 4194 milliseconds uh, which is the maximum timeout of the cystic and then the remaining part Part, uh, is just the difference between expected 5000 milliseconds and this uh, cystic overflow uh, value. Thank you for watching this video.